to be here. San Diego Hall H! It's time to bring out who I just like to refer to as the magic, the director and the cast of The Predator! Everybody give it up for director Shane Black and the cast Sterling K. They do. <laughs> Truly. As y'all know, the Predator has gone up against the biggest bats in the entire universe, right? So we've got like Batman, Judge Dredd, the Justice League, also Archie. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is the kind of argument that was like raging on set. Olivia, tell me how you think the Predator would do in a battle versus Sarah Connor. Ooh. Ooh. Me too. Sarah Connor! Yeah. I'll go Sarah Connor just because I want them to like me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they're saying. There's no problem there, Olivia. Say okay, what you're yeah. really doing. Appreciate it. What about, let's go, Sterling K. Brown, do you have an opinion on Ash Williams from Evil Dead? <laughs> right? Like, think about it. Okay. Thinking about it. I'm gonna say something really okay, controversial. So. Uh-oh. I haven't seen Evil Dead. <gasps> I can't comment intelligently. I apologize. Uh, do, do, is there anybody else on the panel yeah. that's caught up with pop culture that wants to answer? Yeah, right? <laughs> okay. If Ash is crafty, Ash is crafty. Slower than he used to be, but crafty. <laughs> if Ash can, if Ash can just dismember one arm, especially a, any, a wrist gauntlet arm yeah. or a spike arm on a Yauchua, he's good to go. Nice. I think I think Ash can win that one. If, if, it's, if it's in a creepy cabin, right? If, it, if the whole fight takes place in a creepy, rundown cabin, Ash wins. Ash wins. Or Ash's hand wins. Ash's hand wins. Right? I love it. Shane, give us a little context for what we just saw. Talk about like that scene and how it applies to this version of Predator. Well, you know, part of the original Predator to me was that it was a perfect fusion. It was a piece of perfect pop art, right? It's the alien craze of the 80s and the Rambo craze together. And there was a kind of a wink to it also because you had these super muscular guys with weapons that were absolutely ridiculous. Um, so this one we decided for the leaner kind of meaner approach of a dirty half dozen. And then the misfits, basically. And that applies equally to there's a kid in the movie on the autism spectrum. There's a sort of misanthropic uh, scientist, beautifully played by Olivia Munn, who likes dogs better than people. And they're all sort of these misfits who come together. Um, it's important that they're good at what they do. It's also important that they forgot that. And that they have to, in the course of the movie, sort of find each other again, have each other's back. It's the, it's the modern equivalent to me of the group in the first movie. Um, you know, hopefully there's lines that people will remember. I always remember, I ain't got time to bleed, you know. <laughs> um, so th it was a chance to bounce people off each other and, and make these guys as relatable as possible. You get the best character actors in the world with amazing acting chops. You throw them in the room, and then my job is to get out of the fucking way. <laughs> KMK, what is it like to be stuck with all of these people in a confined space between takes. Uh, yeah, oh yeah. Mm. Um, <laughs> it's uh, I'm not. I don't understand. I don't understand how we got anything done <laughs> because we just had we we were having fun all the time and and you, my favorite thing I've been on a film set is building a culture 
is building a, a, like an almost an insta culture. Yeah. So we spend a lot of time watching YouTube videos together. We spend a lot of time. People would come into my trailer. We would watch uh, uh, black exploitation movies. Uh, so we'd watch Dolomite movies, and we would watch we watch the, the Room, and and then we and then we would do everything in our power to try to get some moment from those movies so into our movie. Yeah. So yeah. so. There's, there's, a, uh, there's a YouTube video that we would watch all the time. There was a movement in this YouTube video where a guy, a guy who's been convicted of dr uh, uh, drug possession. Not this again. Yes, this again. Because uh. you're the only one who didn't enjoy it because you're a sociopath. <laughs> I'm the only sane one. And, uh, and there's, a, true. There's, a, there's a moment um, in, in, this, in this video where this guy does this thing where he points to somebody like this. We tried in every single take of this movie <laughs> to get this movement in the movie. And I think we might have gotten one in. I, I don't know yet, but I mean, there's just inside, guys, the alien's over there, but I think if we stay over here, we can fling that motherfucker like this and get him. I don't know if we, we're trying to get this, we're gonna get him like that. If I got this gun, you take a grenade launcher, make it to the chopper. We gotta get over here. <laughs> Unbeknownst to Shane, and then also in any of the movies we watch, there were lines we try to get in. So the, the, there's a line from Black Exploitation movie that goes, Bitch, are you for real? <laughs> I tried six times to get... But this is the first I've seen the alien for the first time. Bitch, are you for real? That's why Keegan's not in the movie much. <laughs> So, uh, hijinks, hijinks and shenanigans Got it. between action and cut. Yeah. Loud and clear. Uh, Olivia, I was thinking about the first movie in that coincidentally, question mark, two of those cast members went on to be governors. Mm. And I want you to tell me who out of everybody here would be most likely to hold an office. Oh. Oh. I like this gesturing, Thomas Jane. Please keep that going. I think it me. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Sterling and Keegan. Okay. And yourself. It's well, you. okay. I am running for um, governor of the state of California. I'd like all of the votes. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. Include all of you guys as supporters. No, I think it would definitely be useful. What you wanna do it, Sterling? Brown Key, 2020? <laughs> That's a lot of I black. Mean, I mean, you know, I'm just trying to be real right now. We need a good upstanding white dude. It's just me, it's just me and myself. No. I'll be the kid. I mean, I mean, I'll, I'll go 2024. You take the fuck. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, how much, how much worse can I do? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Jake. I want to talk about your family legacy in the Predator movies because shout out to Gary Busey, Predator. Yeah. yeah. for dad um, yeah this this is uh, I'm really excited to be here with with these guys um, you know my dad I was on the set in uh, in the 80s when they were doing uh, Predator 2 and um, it was cool it was set in the future my dad was like check it out look at this suit this is what they're gonna look like in 97 <laughs> I was really impressed, you know, and um, he was 46 at the time, and I spent my whole career, I spent, I don't know, 25, 26 years trying to distance myself from being lumped in with, and you, you know, every day it's, yeah. you, has anyone ever told you you look like Gary Busey? <laughs> no, wow, thanks for, God, thanks for telling me that, I hadn't seen a mirror in uh, ever. Uh, so, after spending these, all these years of trying to build a career in the film industry and not just be lumped in with him, this comes along. And it's really the coup de grace, it's the moment, it's the moment of like, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it all the way. And have Shane call me and say, look at this idea, what do you think? I was like, hell yeah, let's do it. So I'm the same age in this movie that my dad was. Uh, I think Sean was too. Cool. <laughs>